Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis. And today we will discuss about the Ekman transport phenomena and its effects. Now the Ekman transport theory says that if a wind is blowing parallel to the coastline and in northern hemisphere if it is on the right side or in southern hemisphere it is on the left side then the net transport of water that is across different layers of water the net transport will occur in a direction perpendicular to this wind so here you we can see that wind is flowing in this direction so the net transport of water will occur in this direction it says that water in different layers will move in a direction that is separated by 45 degree and thus it will create a spiral as you can see over here so this is called Ekman spiral in this video we will try to understand why waters in different layers will move in different directions and why the net transport is perpendicular to the direction of wind and the net effect of this Ekman transport can be felt till 100 meter depth so you can see that it does not affect the whole column of water but only the water in the surface of the oceans so how did this Ekman theory originated when Ekman was in Greenland, he observed that when wind was blowing parallel to the coastline, the icebergs, they will not move along with the wind, but they would move in a direction 30 to 40 degree to this wind and away from the coastline. You can see here that this iceberg moved from here to here and did not move along with the coastline. So this is what Ekman observed and he was quick to realize that there must be Coriolis force playing a part in this. He quickly developed a theory which is called Ekman transport theory or Ekman theory and we will try to understand what is this Ekman theory. To understand the Ekman theory we need to divide the ocean water into different horizontal layers. So here we can see that we have divided this ocean water into different layers and each layer is represented by a different color. Now if wind is blowing over this ocean water there will be friction between these two layers and because of this the ocean water will move we are not considering the Coriolis force right now now this water will move in the direction of this wind now because this uh, first layer is moving in this direction there will be friction between the first layer of water and the second layer of water and therefore the second layer of water will also move but the distance and velocity that this second water will cover will be less compared to the first layer similarly there will be friction between the second layer and the third layer so this third layer will also move but again the distance and velocity will decrease we will see that subsequent layers will move with a decreased velocity and they will cover different distances and this will go on till the effect of the force becomes negligible and then the that layer will have zero displacement or zero velocity now we will see what happens when wind is blowing over the ocean water and Coriolis force is also acting. So now we will see the effect of Coriolis force on the movement of these water layers. So here we can see that the wind is moving in this direction while the Coriolis force will act in this direction in northern hemisphere. So the net force that will act on this first layer will be in a direction which is in middle of these two forces that is 45 degree to both these forces. So the net force which is acting on the topmost layer is in this direction and therefore the topmost layer will move in this direction as you can see. Now the topmost layer has moved in this direction so it will create a frictional force on the second layer which will be in the direction of motion of the first layer. Now because the, uh, the force of friction on second layer is in this direction therefore the second layer will experience a Coriolis force in this direction perpendicular to the first force which is the frictional force of layer 1. So the net force which is acting on the second layer will be in this direction and thus the second layer will move in this direction. Now again because the second layer is has moved in this direction the frictional force on layer 3 will also act in this direction and therefore again the Coriolis force will act in direction perpendicular to this frictional force and thus the net force acting on the third layer will be in this direction that will be making 45 degree with this angle and therefore the third layer will move in this direction subsequently each layer will experience a frictional force 
and Coriolis force which is separated by 45 degree compared to the previous layer and therefore each layer will move in a direction which makes 45 degree to the previous layer. So therefore you can see that this and this are separated by 45 degree the layer 2 and layer 3 movement is separated by 45 degree the layer 3 and layer 4 and these all these layers are separated by 45 degree. So if we consider an air column and we consider the movement of water in each of these layers we can see that the movement would be something like this. The topmost layer will be moving by an angle 45 degree with the direction of wind and then each layer will be moving at an angle 45 degree to the upper layer. So this explains the Ekman spiral. As Ekman suggested that each layer will move in a direction which will make 45 degree with the layer above it. The surface current will be making an angle 45 degree with the wind while each uh, subsequent layer will be making 45 degree angle with the previous layer. Now if we consider all these layers and if we integrate it then the net transport of water is found in this direction. However on the surface the water will be moving at an angle 45 degree to this wind but the net water transport will occur in this direction that is perpendicular to the wind. Now because of this Ekman transport several regions have upwelling and downwelling. So let's try to understand how this occurs. As we have considered suppose that wind is moving parallel to the coast and it is on the right hand side of the coast and it is in northern hemisphere then as we have seen the net transport of water will occur in this direction. Now because the wind continues to move the water will continue to move in this direction. So there will be a depletion of water on the surface here therefore you see water will rise from the bottom and reach the surface. So the water from the bottom is brought to the surface which is called upwelling. Now because this bottom or the floor of the ocean has lot of nutrients. These nutrients are deposited by decomposition of marine living organisms as well as sediments which are deposited from the erosion of our landforms. So these nutrients are brought to the surface and they act as a nutrient supply for phytoplanktons or zooplanktons. There is a phytoplankton boom in this region. These phytoplanktons are eaten by zooplanktons and in turn zooplanktons are eaten by a lot of bigger fishes. So a very good supply of food is created because of this upwelling and therefore these regions are good for fisheries. Similarly if a wind is moving away from the coastline and it is moving in this direction then net transport of water will occur over here. Therefore water will move towards the coastline and there will be accumulation of water over here. And we will see that because of this accumulation of water the water will move downwards forcing this water to be displaced in this direction. Therefore we see if the wind is moving in this direction away from the so then there will be downwelling at the coastal region. If we consider the ocean currents across the world and if we see that these are the patterns or these are the zyres. Here we can see that these are the zyres which are moving in this direction. In the southern hemisphere they will be moving in anti-clockwise direction. Now on these zyres we will see that the net transport of water will occur towards the center. Because the Ekman transport phenomena will make the net transport of water towards the center in each of these gyres. So you can see that all of these gyres have net transport of water towards the center. And therefore there will be accumulation of water in the center. And therefore there is a bulge in the center of these gyres. We see that the level of ocean increases in the center of these gyres. And because of this bulge or because of this rise in ocean level we see that there is geostrophic flow. We have a separate video where we have explained what is geostrophic current and how they are formed. The link should be available in the description. I hope I was able to explain what is Ekman transport and if you like the video then please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. If you have any doubts regarding this topic, please ask us in the comments and we will try to rectify it as soon as possible. And if you like what we are doing and want to contribute then you can use the QR code given here.
थैंक यू थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो